So tell me about the the shoot. How did it go? This is your first feature film. Yeah. Uh, so you're... for both of us, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. what was the pre production like? Uh, a disaster. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> which was actually the pre production on this film perfectly encapsulated both the production of this film and the post production. Mm-hmm. Um, we wrote multiple drafts of the script. Uh, well, the, uh, the original screenwriter, Matthew Barnes, who's a guy who lives out in New Zealand, actually, who mm-hmm. I've never met and never spoken to over the phone <laughs> or, or even through like Google chat or whatever. We've only ever talked through IM, wrote the first couple of drafts of the script. And then I took it and did rewrites on, from that. And I did like another three or four drafts, showed it to some people, got some good reactions, figured it was done, ready to start going, started doing pre-production, started get build a crew, you know, reach out to friends, see if they wanted to be involved. Um and then basically Mike Oransky, who you know we both know and was a producer on the show and was going to co-direct it originally but ended up just being the uh, DP, read the script like two weeks before we were ready to start shooting and <laughs> said, no, this doesn't work. Like you need to rewrite large chunks of this. Wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And basically like he point, pointed out what his problems were and once he made his case, I basically agreed with him. Um there was some stuff in it that was really corny that didn't really work. And, you know, we were good to get rid of. And so I basically had to go back and I rewrote it another three to four times. Um, Damn. And in the time it took to rewrite the film, uh, Mandy changed its posting policies and New York Casting changed its po- posting policies. So we could no longer pass uh, post for ca- crew on Mandy because it was it was deferred pay. They no longer allowed that. So we had to get all of our crew. You're kidding me. No, no, I'm dead serious. Through uh, Craigslist. And uh, we could no longer post um, something on New York Casting. I don't remember what, what it was. Oh, no, maybe it was the mayor's office that changed the posting. One of the other sites that we were using changed the, what, what they allowed you to post. Oh, wow. And we, we lost the ability to post on that site. So we lost large chunks of where we could get cast and crew from wow well hold on for for those of you listening uh this is a, a feature horror film yeah what would you call it straight up horror or horror horror mystery suspense yeah bit? yeah i mean it, yeah. it's a horror film yeah psychological horror yeah. film yeah. yeah cool um now so uh let's let's bring you in the conversation yeah. uh uh michael so sure how how when did you come on board to the project? How far along in the process were you? Oh, uh, um, I, I auditioned for it. Didn't think I'd get it and then got it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, um, um, I can't even remember where I found it. Was it Mandy or was it? No, like, you applied to New York casting. New York casting. Okay. Actually. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Yes. Yeah, for the scrapbook. Yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, I showed up, I saw a bunch of dudes that look like 10 years, 15 years older than me. And I was like, I'm just not shot in hell. Oh yeah. We should point out that the character is in their mid, his mid thirties and Mike auditioned for the role in his, he was 20. I was 20. Really? I turned 21 on set. Yeah, which shit. is weird. Yeah, I I don't know uh, if that's good because I look a lot more like aged <laughs> than most like twenty year olds do. I think that's still good. receding I'm hairline. It's all the smoking. Um, well, people don't people won't resent you for being so young. Yeah, that's true. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This guy's so young. The trick is just to stop aging at a certain point. Right, you know, right. Yeah. Hit that perfect level and just not age from there. That's difficult. It's difficult. Uh, but yeah, no, just went in, just screamed a bit in the room, and and Rory seemed to like it. Um, I met Denise too, his wife, who's also a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, she beamed me. I thought she, she did the costume design as well. Yeah. I think so. yeah. Well, she designed the the, the villain's costume. Oh, we okay. had an yes. actual costume designer as well. Oh wow! Because she, she didn't have the time to dedicate to doing all the costumes, basically. Yeah, she's incredible. So shout out to D first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I thought she hated me as well. Couldn't have been farther from the truth. <laughs> I thought everyone hated me in this process and come yeah. to find out that no, I got hired. <laughs> nice. Actually, so uh, Mike's audition was crazy. Uh, we had basically done a whole day of auditions and hadn't seen a single person that we liked for the lead. We had a couple of potentials for the other roles, but we hadn't seen anybody that we liked. And he was the very last person to come in. Oh, and wow. when, we, when we were doing the auditions, we had like four or five people in the room, you know, involved in pre-production for most of the auditions. And by that point, it was the end of the day. So it was literally just the two of us in this room. And he walked in with a hardcore porno stash. You know, nice. and we were both oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is this is not going to be good. I came from another shoot where I was just doing lines all over, not real lines, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sugar, 
and, and you know, whatever powdered milk. I was doing improv yeah. lines. Yeah. I was doing improv lines. And so we just wanted to leave and we were like, this is gonna be a disaster. And he just went balls out in this this, you know, this audition. He was like screaming and crying and like on the floor and just totally threw himself into it, and just blew us away. And the really funny part was we had him we did a callback where we like took all the actors that we liked and we had them play against each other to see who would look great. And when he shows up to the audition, his entire head is shaved. He's got no hair on his head. I literally walked out and I was like, oh, all right, we're ready to start as soon as Mike Jefferson shows up. And he's like, he's like over hey, here. Hey, man. Yeah. It's me. I was like, oh, shit. I thought that was a cancer patient. Uh, <laughs> so you play a character who is, um, you know, what, uh, agoraphobic, yeah. right? And, yeah. uh, and has all sorts of mental problems. So sure. uh, I guess that just for the audience listening, um, can you encapsulate the film like a quick synopsis? You had a really good synopsis. I read on IMDb. I'm like, damn, that was yeah, good. Actually, yeah, actually, I was like, really proud of that opening line. Michael Jefferson is a man trapped in his own home by his own mind. Yeah. Yeah, basically, he plays a guy who uh, was in a car accident that killed his wife, and the stress of the car accident has resulted in him having agoraphobia. So he's literally stuck in his own home, and he can't go anywhere. Uh, and he has no real contact with the outside world beyond his therapist who makes home visits and his best friend who basically comes and visits him every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the start of the film, he basically has a girl who brings him groceries that he's building a relationship with. And there is an inciting event, which in, someone breaks into his house, basically. And from that point on, you're never quite sure what's real and what's psychosis or what's supernatural. You know, yep. He starts seeing his wife around the house. He starts seeing the home invader appear out of nowhere. There's a woman in, in a black wedding dress who keeps mocking him. And basically his his life and his mind unravel from there. Now when the the you first get the script in your hand, like I mean it was you, now you had this screenwriter from New Zealand. He had, had he had this property, he had this finished script. And were at that time were you like, okay, how can I make a you know a limited location independent film or, or No, no, actually um Matthew and I uh, had tried to work on another project. Um, we were going to do a comedy web series because I was at NBC Digital at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had all these digital resources available to me. And literally, we had finished the script and we were in a good place with it. And that was when NBC Digital got shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so all these resources just dropped out from under me. And I no longer could do the, this website that I was planning to do. And uh, basically, Matt said, hey, you know, like I had a ball working with you. Why don't we do a film together? You know, why don't we write, write a script together? And I said, sure, you know, great. And we threw around some ideas and he basically like wanted to know what assets I had available to me, like what we could take advantage of. And I was like, well, I just moved from Philly to New York, so I got nothing. You know, like all the crew I know is in Philly. I got nothing here. Yeah. And I was like, well, I do have access to this really awesome house, you know, this giant house. And from there, we kicked around some ideas and figured out a way to use the house to its fullest. Mm. And that was really where it all came from. And when did so? When did you? So you're you grew up in Philly? No, or? I grew up in here in New York. I'm born okay. and raised New Yorker. So you were out in Philly, and and you you had uh, you had resources there. You had a, yeah people you yeah I'd gone to film and... school out there, so like I knew all right, these production okay. people out there, and you know I had I could if necessary I could turn to my college and get their use their equipment if I needed it. All that stuff, you know. Yeah, that's cool. So you came out here. So now I'm trying to think. Um, I was I was working for Mike Aransky actually yeah. at, at NBC Digital Studios doing. Uh, he did some pilots. We did yeah. a couple like we actually did that uh, Double Dragon. The, the yeah, yeah, busted, yeah. Uh, loaded cartridge, <laughs> loaded thing. cartridge yeah. thing, and all that stuff. That so cool. that that um, that dries up, right? Yeah. And then uh, do you go to A and E after that, or how did it go? No, down? I. Um, I got lucky, unlike everyone else in that department, about two months before that department got shut down, they essentially sold me to another department in, NB in NBC. <laughs> um, you know, like basically they were renting me out. Another department was paying them to use me. 